we'll get started. Okay, so um, yeah, hi everyone, congratulations. Welcome to the semifinals. Um, you're one of the top 100 spellers in the B, which is an awesome accomplishment. So um, would be super proud of yourselves. Um, and yeah, as you probably have figured out, we're gonna be live streaming this semifinals on Facebook. And so um, at this point, we ask all parents, relatives, friends, siblings, whoever's in your room to um, leave and go to a separate room to watch the B on, on Facebook. Okay, cool. Um, then, oh, very quickly, we'll just introduce our judges. Um, so Cooper uh, Komatsu, he's going to be our pronouncer. Um, he is former National Spelling Bee competitor and is currently a freshman at U Chicago. Um, our bell judge, that'll be me. So I'm basically gonna tell you if your word is correct or incorrect. Um, roots judge is Sylvie. So if you ha have any roots questions, she will answer those for you. Um, she's also a, um, former National Spelling Bee competitor and is a freshman at Dartmouth University. And then our timing judge will be Navneet. Um, and he is a freshman in high school right now um, and was actually the champion of our Spell Pundit B last May. So um, yeah, so that's our judging, uh, judging team. Okay, all right, let's get started then um, with Speller 12. I'm Advait and I'm in sixth grade. All right, uh, welcome everybody. Okay, uh, I guess we'll start with the spelling. Uh, speller number 12, your word is Andui. Andui, can I have all the information please? You may. Andui is a noun, it comes from French. It is a spicy smoked pork sausage used especially in Cajun cooking. Louis' favorite Cajun food includes crawfish bisque and andouille gumbo. Can I please have all the information again? Oh. Yes, and I forgot to say, um, wait, I'm hearing my, the audio of the B twice. This is the problem. Sorry, okay. Uh, I'm so sorry, Andui. Uh, also, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you this earlier. Andui, also Andui, Andui, Andui. Uh, andouille is a noun, it comes from French, a spicy smoked pork sausage used especially in Cajun cooking. Louis' favorite Cajun foods include crawfish bisque and andouille gumbo. Andouille. A-N-D-O-U-I-L-L-E. Andouille. That is correct. Uh, next seller is seller 25. Hello, I'm, in, I'm Teresa Sheridan and I'm in eighth grade. All right, uh, speller number 25, your word is Halifax. Can you repeat the word please? Halifax. Can I have the definition? Uh, Halifax is a town northeast of Manchester in West Yorkshire, Northern England. Halifax. Halifax. H-A-L-I-F-A-X. Halifax. That is correct. The next speller is speller 28. Hello, my name is Norris and I'm in seventh grade. All right, speller 28, your word has a near homonym. Uh, your word is amygdaline. Uh, this amygdaline is an adjective. It comes from, uh, sorry, this word is an adjective. It comes from Latin and it means relating to a tonsil. Amygdaline. Amygdaline. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one I have listed. Amygdaline. Amygdaline. May I have the definition again, please? You may. Amygdaline means relating to a tonsil. Amygdaline. Amygdaline. A M Y G D A L I N E. Amygdaline. 
That is correct. Um, next speller is speller 35. Now I'm a two Detaraj fifth from Cedar Canyon Elementary and I'm in fifth grade. Okay, speller number 35, your word is Dragerman. Um, can I have the definition? You may. Dragerman is one of a crew of miners trained in underground emergency and rescue work. Dragerman. Does this come from German? It comes from a German name and an English part. Can you repeat the origin again? Uh, Dragerman comes from a German name plus an English part. Can I have all the information? You may. Uh, Dragerman, that's the only pronunciation I have. Uh, it is a noun. It comes from a German name plus an English part. Dragerman is one of a crew of miners trained in underground emergency and rescue work. Elias worked as a Dragerman in a coal mine for 25 years. Dragerman. Do you see the definition was like a crew that is just, can you repeat the definition? Uh, a Dragerman is one of a crew of miners trained in underground emergency and rescue work. Dragerman. Um, can I have the part, is it a plural, is it a plural noun or a singular noun? It's a singular noun. D R. A E G E R M A N, Dragerman. That is correct. Next speller is speller 40. Hi, my name is Tonzi Gerke Potty, and I'm from eighth, I'm in eighth grade currently. All right, speller number 40, your word is Siamaki. Could I please have the definition of the word? <laughs> Siamaki is a fighting with a shadow or an imaginary enemy. Siamaki. Um, could you please use it in a sentence? Uh, yes. David Siamaki with a, an imaginary comic villain becomes more animated when he is wearing his superhero costume. Siamaki. Siamaki. S C I A M A C H Y Siamaki. That is correct. Next speller is speller forty-two. My name is Emmanuel, and I'm in eighth grade. All right, speller forty-two. Your word is netiquette. Can I have the definition? Netiquette is the. Sorry. Uh, is the accepted standards of behavior in online communication. Can you repeat the word again? Netiquette. Can I have the word in a sentence? Yes. The basic rule of email netiquette in any circumstance is to have and show consideration for the other party. Netiquette. N-E-T-I-Q-U-E-T-T-T. -E E, netiquette. That is correct. Next speller is speller 47. Hello, my name is Shweta and I am a sixth grader. Okay, speller 47, your word is Zakino. Zakino, am I pronouncing it correctly? As far as I can tell, yes. Zakino, may I have all the de information, please? Yes. Zakino, also Zacchino. Uh, Zacchino is a noun. It comes from Italian. It is an old gold coin of Italy and Turkey first struck at Venice about the end of the 13th century. The Zacchino was widely used in trade and commerce throughout Europe until the 19th century. Zacchino. Zacchino. Can you repeat the sentence, please? Yes. The Zacchino was widely used in trade and commerce throughout Europe until the 19th century. Zacchino. Z E C C H I 
N O Zakino. That is correct. Next speller is speller 48. Hi, my name is Maya and I'm in seventh grade. Speller 48, your word is onocorexis. Onocorexis. Can I have the definition, please? Yes. Onocorexis is abnormal brittleness of the fingernails or toenails with splitting of the free edge. Onocorexis. Onocorexis. Can I have the language of origin, please? Yes. Onocorexis comes from two Greek parts. Onocorexis. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that's the only one I have listed here. Onocorexis. Onocorexis. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? The use of nail polish remover caused onocorexis on Rita's hand nails. Onocorexis. Can I have the part of speech, please? Onocorexis is a noun. Onocorexis. O N Y C H O R R H E X I S. Onocorexis. That is correct. Next speller is speller 53. My name is Arshani and I'm in seventh grade. Speller 53, your word is deloid. Deloid, can I have the definition please? Deloid means relating to a class of vertifers that are entirely made up of females and found in freshwater habitats. Deloid. Okay. Uh, can I have the language of origin? Uh, Deloid comes from two Greek parts. Deloid, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that's the only one I have. Deloid. Deloid. B D E L L O I D. Deloid. That is correct. Um, next speller is speller 54. Hi, my name is Manvita and I'm in eighth grade. Would you mind showing your hands in the frame? Right, sorry. No problem. Uh, speller 54, your word is Ensenia. Ensenia, can I have all the information, please? Yes. Ensenia, also Ensenia, Ensenia, Ensenia. Uh, it is a noun that is plural, but singular or plural in construction. Uh, it comes from New Latin. An annual ceremony at Oxford University uh, in memory of founders or benefactors. And the Ensenia at the university was a very lively event. Ensenia. Am I saying it correctly? Ensenia? That is one of the pronunciations, I believe, yes. Um, can you repeat the language of origin? Ensenia is from New Latin. Okay, Ensenia. E N C E N I A, Ensenia. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling is E N C A E N I A. Good job. Thank you. Next speller is speller 55. My name is Sophia and I'm in sixth grade. Uh, speller 55, uh, your word has a near homophone. The word is lyonnaise. This word is an adjective and it means of food, cooked or garnished with onions, usually fried potatoes. Lyonnaise. Lyonnaise, can I have the limit of origin, please? Lyonnaise comes from French. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one I have. Lyonnaise. Can you repeat the word? Lyonnaise. Lyonnaise. L-Y-O-N-N-A-I-S-E. Lyonnaise. That's correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller 73. Um, my name is Aiden Lewandowski, and I'm in the eighth grade. 
spelling 73. Your word is menagerie. Menagerie. Can I have the definition, please? Menagerie is a collection of wild animals kept in captivity for exhibition. Uh, what's the language of origin? Menagerie comes from French. Menagerie. M E N A G E R I E. Menagerie. That is correct. The next speller is speller 76. Okay. I'm Harini Logan, and I'm in seventh grade. All right, speller 76. Your word is cosmicology. Can I have the word one more time? Cosmicology. Cosmicology. Can I have the definition, please? Cosmicology is the science that considers the Earth in its relation to universal phenomena. Cosmicology. Cosmicology. Are there any alternate pronunciations? It's the only one I have listed. Cosmicology. Cosmicology. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, cosmicology comes from a Middle English part and a German part. Cosmo. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> cosmicology. Can I have the definition one more time? Yes. Cosmicology is the science that considers the Earth in its relation to universal phenomena. Cosmicology. C. O S M E C O L O G Y. Cosmicology. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 82. Hello, I'm Ish and I'm an actor. Uh, all right, uh, speller. Or, sorry, would it just be possible for you to speak louder? It's hard for us to hear you. Okay, I'm, I'm Ish and I'm in eighth grade. Okay, speller 82, your word is quattrocento. Can you repeat the word? Yes, quattrocento. Uh, can I have the language of origin? Quattrocento comes from Italian. Can I have the definition? Quattrocento is the 15th century, used in reference to the to Italian art and literature of that time. Quattrocento, Q U A T T R O C E N T O. Quattrocento. That is correct. Next speller is speller 86. Hi, my name is Nikla, and I am in eighth grade. Speller, speller 86, your word is febrifuge. May I have the definition, please? A febrifuge is any medicine that lowers body temperature to prevent or alleviate fever, an antipyretic. May I have the language of origin? Febrifuge comes from French. Could you repeat the word one more time, please? Febrifuge. Thanks. Febrifuge. F E B R I F U G E. Febrifuge. That is correct. Next speller is speller 92. Hi, I'm Maria and Mindra, and I'm in seventh grade. All right, speller 92, your word is gerontogeus. Gerontogeus, can I have the definition? Gerontogeus means relating to the old world or the Eastern Hemisphere. Okay, gerontogeus, can I have the language of origin? Uh, gerontogeus comes from a French part, a Middle English part, and another Middle English part. Could you say the word again for me? Gerontogeus. Okay. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that's the only one I have here. Gerontogeus. Okay, Gerontogeus. G-E-R-O-N-T-O-G-E-O-U-S. Gerontogeus. That is correct. 
Um, next speller is speller 93. Hello, my name is Athar Nuthan Ramnikar, and I'm in sixth grade. All right, speller number 93, your word is Delftware. Delftware. Can I, can, is there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one I have here. Uh, what, uh, can you please say the meaning? Delftware is English or Dutch tin glazed earthenware, typically decorated by hand in blue or a white background. Okay. Delftware. D E L F T W A R E. Delftware. That was correct. Um, next speller is speller 103. Thank you. Hi, I'm Smrithika, and I'm in fifth grade. Speller 103, your word is escabeche. Escabeche. Can I please have all the information? Escabeche is a noun. Uh, it comes from Spanish. Escabeche is fish or chicken fried in oil, then marinated in a spicy sauce and served cold. Martha pre prepared escabeche with crisply fried mackerel and pickled bell peppers in a sweet and tangy sauce. Uh, and the only pronunciation is escabeche. Can you please repeat the language of origin? Escabeche comes from Spanish. Escabeche. E-S-C-A-B-E-C-H. E, Escabeche. That is correct. Next speller, speller 114. Um, hi, my name is Rhythm, and I'm in sixth grade. All right, speller 114. Your word is Galapot. Can I have all the information? Um, Gallipot is a noun. It comes from Middle English. It is a small, usually ceramic vessel used by pharmacists to hold medicines or ointments. Can you um, repeat? Oh, sorry. Amanda's grandfather uses a glazed earthenware gallipot for his Chinese herbal decoction. Um, and that's the only pronunciation. Gallipot. Can, um, can you repeat the word? Gallipot. Um, can you repeat the definition? Uh, Gallopot is a small, usually ceramic vessel used by pharmacists to hold medicines or ointments. Um, can I have the language of origin again? Gallopot comes from Middle English. Can I have the part of speech? Gallopot is a noun. Gallopot, G. A L I P O T Gallipot. Sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling is G A L L I P O T. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. The next speller is speller 117. Hello, my name is Kirsten and I am in fifth grade. All right, speller 117, your word is apocyopesis. Apocyopesis. Can you please repeat the word? Apocyopesis. Apocyopesis. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, not quite. Apocyopesis. Apocyopesis. This is closer. Apocyopesis. Apocyo pieces. Can I please have the part of speech? Apocyo pieces is a noun. Apocyo pieces. Can I please have the language of origin? Uh, this word comes from late Latin. Apocyo pieces. Can I please have the definition? Apocyopesis is a sudden breaking off in the midst of a sentence, uh, as by writers of realistic conversations, as if from un inability or unwillingness to proceed. Apocyopesis. Apocyopesis. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Apocyopesis. 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 
episode pieces. A P O S I O P E S I S episode pieces. That is correct. Next speller is speller 128. Hi, my name is Shijay Shivakumar, and I'm in seventh grade. Speller 128, your word is basarisk. Basarisk, can I have the definition? Basarisk is an omnivorous mammal of Mexico and the southwestern U.S. resembling a raccoon and having a long bushy tail with black and white rings. Basarisk, uh, can I have all the information? Basarisk, that's the only pronunciation. It's a noun, uh, which is a modification of a new Latin word. It's an omnivorous mammal of Mexico in the southwestern U.S., resembling a raccoon and having a long and bushy tail with black and white rings. A basarisk lived in the rock crevices of the mountain terrain. Basarisk. Basarisk. B A S S A R I S K. Basarisk. That is correct. Next speller is speller 134. Speller 134. Oh, what do you say your name in grade? Hi, I'm Chaser, and I'm in sixth grade. All right, speller 134, your word is neosology. Neosology, may I have all the information, please? You may. Neosology, also neosology, uh, is a noun which comes from Greek. It is, means the study of young birds. The ornithologist specializes in neosology, especially incubation and rearing of young songbirds. Neosology. N-E-O-S-S-O-L-O-G-Y, neosology. That is correct. Next speller is speller 138. My name is Alexia Vega and I'm in fifth grade. Speller 138, your word is ebolism. Ebolism. Can you please, I mean, can I have the definition, please? Yes. Ebolism is the formation of bubbles in bodily fluids under sharply reduced environmental pressure. Ebolism. Can you please use it in a sentence? Yes. Astronauts will experience ebolism if they go to spacewalk without the spacesuit. Ebolism. Oh. Can I please have the language of origin? Ebolism is from a Latin part and an English part. Ebolism. E B U L L I S M. Ebolism. That is correct. The next speller is speller 154. Hi, I'm Dhruv, and I'm in fifth grade. Speller 154, your word is polyptoton. Polyptoton. Am I saying it correctly? As far as I can hear, yes. Polyptoton. Can I have all the information, please? Polyptoton, it's the only pronunciation, is a noun that comes from late Latin from Greek. It is a rhetorical figure involving the repetition of a word in different cases or inflections within the same sentence. Absolute power corrupts absolutely is a good example of polyptoton. Polyptoton. Does this come from the Greek root poly meaning many? Yes, it does. Polyptoton. Hi, Drew. Can we see your hands, please? Oh, yes. Yes. Polyptoton. P-O-L-Y-P-T-O-T-O-N. Polyptoton. That is correct. 
All right, that is the end of round one. Um, we have, very quickly. Um, okay, we have 23 spellers remaining. And um, we'll go ahead to round two and then we'll take a break after round two. So we'll start round two with speller 12. I'm Advait and I'm in sixth grade. Speller 12, your word is quidnunc. Quidnunc, can I have all the information please? Quidnunc is a noun that comes from Latin. Quidnunc is a person who is avidly curious and given to speculating about ephemeral or petty things, a busybody. Sandra is a quidnunc and very inquisitive about her neighbors. And that's the only pronunciation. Quidnunc. Quidnunc. Can I please have all the information again? Yes. Quidnunc is a noun. It comes from Latin. A, a quidnunc is a person who is avidly curious and given to speculating about ephemeral or petty things. A busybody. Sandra is a quidnunc and very inquisitive about her neighbors. And that's the only pronunciation. Quidnunc. Quidnunc. Q-U-I-D-N-U-N-C, quidnunc. Uh, yeah, that's correct. It was muted. That's correct. The next speller is speller 25. Hi, my name is Teresa and I'm in eighth grade. Speller 25, your word is confrérie. Can you repeat the word, please? Confrérie. Can I have the language of origin? Confrérie comes from French. Can I have the definition? Confrérie is a group of people sharing a common interest. Confrérie, am I saying it correctly? Could you say it once more? Confrérie. Yes, confrérie. Confrérie, C-O-N-F-R-E-R-I-E, confrérie. That is correct. Next speller is speller 28. Hi, my name is Norris and I'm in seventh grade. Speller 28, your word has a homophone. The word is idiophone. This idiophone is a noun. Uh, it's an instrument that is made of naturally sonorous material and vibrates to produce a sound when struck, shaken or scraped, such as a bell, gong, or rattle. Idiophone. Idiophone. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that is the only one I have. Idiophone. Idiophone. May I have the language of origin again, please? Uh, idiophone comes from German. Idiophone. Can you repeat the word again, please? Uh, idiophone. 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 I D I O P H O N E. Idiophone. That is correct. Next speller, speller 35. I'm a chew that's Raj, um, and I'm in fifth grade. Speller 35, your word is Apadeldok. Apadeldok? Apadeldok. Origin? Apadeldok is from New Latin. Is there any alternative pronunciations? It's the only one I have. Appa del doc. Definition? Appa del doc is a medical liniment made by mixing soap, alcohol, and essential oils. Is it Appa del doc? Uh, Appa del doc. Uh, 
Um, part of speech. Apadeldoc is a noun. Am I saying it correct? Apadeldoc? As far as I can tell, yes. Apadeldoc. Can you repeat all the information again? The word is Apadeldoc. It has no alternate pronunciations. It's a noun from New Latin. Apadeldoc is a medical liniment made by mixing soap, alcohol, and essential oils. Jessica rubbed her bruised joint with a flannel dipped in Apadeldoc. So there's no alternative pronunciations? Uh, that's the only one. Apadeldoc. Can you repeat the pronunciation? Appa del Doc. Is it Appa del Doc? Am I correct? Appa del Doc. Origin? Appa del Doc is from New Latin. And is it, is it Appa del Doc? Appa del Doc. Yeah. Can you repeat it again? Appa del Doc. Did you say Appa del Doc? Appa del Doc. Is it Appa del Doc or Appa del Doc? Appa del Doc. Appa del Doc? I believe so. Is there any wait? There's no. What did you say? Is there any alternative pronunciations? That's the only one. Appa del Doc. You have thirty seconds left. Okay. O p a d e l d o c. Appa del Doc. I'm sorry. That's incorrect. Correct spelling is O P O D E L D O C. Next speller is speller 40. Hi, my name is Swansea Gerkipati, and I'm in eighth grade. Speller 40, your word is eulogious. Could I please have all the um, all the information and all the yes. information? Okay. Eulogious, that's the only pronunciation. Eulogious is an adjective from Latin, meaning growing in wet or swampy ground. Nikita is conducting a scientific study on eulogious mosses. Um, could you please pronounce the word again? Yes, eulogious. Um, what is the language of origin? Eulogious comes from Latin. Um, could you please say the word again? Eulogious. Um, am I pronouncing it correctly? Eulogious. As far as I can hear. Right. Um, eulogious. U l i g e n o u s. Eulogious. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is u l i g i n o u s. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Next speller is speller forty two. My name is Emmanuel and I'm in eighth grade. Speller 42, your word is arietta. Can I have the definition? An arietta is a short solo vocal piece with instrumental accompaniment, as in an opera. Can I have the language of origin? Arietta is from Italian. Can you give me all the information? Arietta, also Arietta, is a noun from Italian. It is a short solo vocal piece with instrumental accompaniment, as in an opera. A famous opera singer sang an extraordinary Arietta at the event. Arietta. 
Arietta. A R I E T T A. Arietta. That is correct. Next speller, speller 47. Hello, my name is Shweta and I'm in sixth grade. Speller 47, your word is Paduasoy. Can you please repeat that? Paduasoy. Can you give me all the information, please? Yes. Paduasoy, that's the only pronunciation, is a noun, but uh, it originates from folk etymology. It's a heavy silk fabric for clothing and upholstery. The Chevalier wore Paduasoy breeches. Can you repeat all the information, please? Thank you. Paduasoy. Uh, that's the only pronunciation. It's a noun that arrived in English by folk etymology. It is a heavy silk fabric for clothing and upholstery. The Chevalier wore Paduasoy breeches. Paduasoy, am I saying that correctly? I believe so. Can you give me the language of origin again? Paduasoy arrived in English by folk etymology. Paduasoy. P A D U A S O I. Paduasoy. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. The correct spelling is. P-A-D-U-A-S-O-Y. Thank you, and good luck to all the people going on. Thank you. Next speller is speller 48. Hi, I'm Maya, and I'm in seventh grade. Speller 48, your word is logoreic. Logoreic, can I ask the definition, please? Logoreic is pathologically excessive and often incoherent talkativeness. Logoreic. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, logoreic comes from, sorry, logoreic comes from New Latin. Logoreic. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, slight difference. Logoreic, logoreic. Logoreic. Can I ask the part of speech, please? Uh, yes. Logoreic is a noun. Logoreic. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? Yes. Nikki tried to engage in a conversation while acting logoreic in an attempt to be noticed at the party. Logoreic. Can you repeat the definition, please? Logoreic means pathologically excessive and often incoherent talkativeness. Logoreic. Can you repeat the word, please? Logoreic. 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 L O G O R R H E I C. Logoreic. That is correct. The next speller is speller 53. My name is Akshay Kona, and I'm in seventh grade. Speller 53. Your word is Horlicote. Can you repeat that? Horlicote. 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 Can I have all the information? Horlicote, also Horlicote, is a noun that arrived by in English by an alteration of a Middle English word. Can you repeat the word? Yes. Horlicote, also Horlicote. Okay, thank you. Can I have the language of origin? Yes, uh, this is an alteration of a Middle English word. Okay. Warlico. W H I R L I C O T E. Warlico. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 55. Hi. Speller 55, your word is contumely. Can I have the definition, please? Contumely 
is uh, the suffering of insult or humiliation. Uh, can I have the language of origin, please? Contumely is, uh, it comes from Middle English, from Middle French, from Latin. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, there are several. Uh, there is contumely, 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 uh, con contumely, contumely. Can you, okay, uh, can you repeat the word? Yes. Uh, all of the pronunciations? Uh, no, just one. Contumely. Con contumely. C O N T U M E L Y. Contumely. That is correct. Thank you. The next speller is speller 73. Speller 73. Yeah. Aiden. Right. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Speller 73. Your word is bergolt. Can you repeat the word? Bergolt. Can I have all the information, please? Bergolt is a noun which comes from Swedish or Norwegian from Old Norse. It is a large marine food fish found on the northern coasts of Europe and America. Okay, Bergolt. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one I have. Bergolt. Uh, can you repeat the language of origin? Uh, Bergolt comes from Swedish or Norwegian from Old Norse. Okay, Bergolt. Bergolt. B E R G Y L T. Bergolt. That is correct. Next speller is speller 76. Okay. Speller 76, your word is enamel. Enamel. Can I have the definition, please? Enamel is an ancient Greek beverage of wine and honey. Enamel. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That is the only one. Enamel. Enamel. Can I have the language of origin, please? Enamel comes from late Latin from Greek. Enamel. Can I have the word one more time? Enamel. Enamel. O-E-N-O-M-E-L. Enamel. That is correct. Thank Next you. Next speller is speller 82. I'm in eighth grade. All right, speller 82, your word is fesh. Can you repeat the word? Fesh. Can I have the definition? Fesh is an Irish folk festival of traditional Irish, Irish music and dancing. Fesh. Um, can I have all the information? Yes. Fesh, that's the only pronunciation. It is a noun from Irish Gaelic, meaning an Irish folk festival of traditional Irish music and dancing. The Fesh Festival opened on Saturday with the Irish dancing at the Southern Hotel. Fesh. Um, can you repeat the word again? Fesh. Can I have the language of origin again? Yes, uh, it's from Irish Gaelic. Fesh. Could you pronounce it once more? Fesh. I believe so. Fesh. F E I S. Fesh. That is correct. Next speller, speller 86. Hi, I'm Nikla, and I am in eighth grade. Speller 86, your word is. Osier. Could you please repeat the word? Osier. May I have the language of origin, please? Yes. Osier is from Middle English. 
May I have the definition, please? Uh, osier is any of various willows whose pliable twigs are used for furniture and basketry. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, just the one, osier. May I have all the information, please? Yes. Osier, that's our only pronunciation. It is a noun from Middle English. It means any of the various willows whose pliable twigs are used for furniture and basketry. The osier grows mostly in wet habitats. Could you repeat the language of origin one more time, please? Yes. Osier is from Middle English. I'm sorry, let me say that again. Osier. Osier. A U G R E, Osier. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling is O S I E R. Good job. Okay. And good luck to all of you. Thank you. Uh, next speller is speller 92. Hello. Speller 92, your word is psychology. Psychology. Can I have the definition? Yes. Psychology is the manifestation of a person's soul to another, usually at some distance from the body. Psychology. Psychology. Can I have the language of origin? Uh, psychology comes from a Greek part and a new Latin part. Psychology. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one. Psychology. Psychology. P-S-Y-C-H-O-R-R-H-A-G-Y. Psychology. That is correct. Next speller, speller 93. Hello, uh, my name is Garth and I'm in Spain. Speller 93, your word is passerelle. Uh, am I saying it correctly? Passerelle? No. Passerelle. Am I saying it correctly? Passerelle? I believe so. Passerelle. Um, could we also see your hands, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Passerelle. Uh, may I have the meaning, please? Passerelle is a bridge designed to be used by pedestrians. Passerelle. Oh, can I have the language of origin? Uh, passerelle is from French. Um, can, I, can you please repeat all, I mean, can you say all the information? Of course. Passerelle is the only pronunciation. It's a noun from French, meaning a bridge designed to be used by pedestrians. Nicole took a shortcut across a passerelle to the engineering building in campus. Passerelle. Passerelle. Am I saying it correctly? Passerelle? I believe so. Okay. Passerelle. P A S R E L L E. Passerelle. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is P-A-S-S-E-R-E-L-L-E. -E -E. Good job. Thank you, and good luck to everyone else. Okay. Next speller is speller 103. Hi. Speller 103. Hi. Your word is oleiferous. Oleiferous. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. Oleiferous, also oleiferous, is an adjective which comes from French plus Middle English. It means producing oil as certain seeds. The oleiferous seeds of colza and canola are used in biodiesel production. Oleiferous. Can you please repeat the origin? Oleiferous comes from French plus Middle English. 
oleiferous. O oleiferous. O l e i f e r o u s. Oleiferous. That is correct. Next speller, speller one seventeen. Hello. Speller 117, your word is Langerostrin. Excuse me, can you repeat again? Langerostrin. Langerostrin. Can I have the alternate pronunciations? Yes, there is Langerostrin and Langerostrin. Langerostrin. Can I please have the part of speech? Langerostrin is an adjective. Langerostrin. Can I please have a language of origin? Uh, Langerostrin comes from a Middle English part plus a Latin part plus another Middle English part. Langerostrin. Can I please have the definition? Langerostrin means having a long jaw. Langerostrin. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes, I believe so. Langerostrin. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Uh, yes. Langerostrin. Also, langerostrin. 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 L. O N G I R O S T R I N E. Longerostrin. That is correct. Next speller is speller 128. Thank you. Hi. Speller 128, your word is. Saccharifrous. Saccharifrous can have the definition. Uh, Saccharifrous is means containing or producing sugar. Uh, does it come from the Greek saccharin meaning sugar? Yes. Yes, it does. Sorry. Uh, can I have the part of speech? Uh, saccharifrous is an adjective. Saccharifrous. S A C C H A R I F E R O U S. Saccharifrous. That is correct. Next speller is speller 134. I'm Chaitra and I'm in sixth grade. All right, speller 134, your word is move. Could you repeat the word? Move. Move. May I have all of the information, please? Yes, the word is move, also mauve. It's a noun that comes from French, which is a strong purple color. Mauve. Sunset? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Of M A U V E move. That is correct. Next speller is speller one thirty eight. My name is Alexia, and I'm in fifth grade. Speller one thirty eight. Your word is Kyla Collis. Sorry, can Kyla please, Collis. Can you please repeat the word? Kyla Collis. Can I please have the language of origin? Kyla Collis comes from a German part and an English part. Can you please have the definition? Uh, Kyla Collis uh, is a word used of cacti and similar plants. It means having fleshy or succulent stems. Can you please use it in a sentence? The exhibition has a colorful and exotic Kyla Collis cacti and other succulents on display. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that's the only one. Kyla Collis. 
Can I please have the part of speech? It's an adjective. Can you um, please repeat the language of origin? Uh, yes. It's from a German part plus an English part. Kyla Collis. Can you please repeat the definition? Uh, Kyla Collis means of cacti and similar plants having fleshy or succulent stems. Kyla Collis. Can you please repeat the language of origin? Uh, yes. Uh, it's a German part and an English part. Kyla Collis. C H E I L A C A U L O U S. Kyle Collis. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. The correct spelling is C H Y L O C A U L O U S. Great job. Um, last speller of this round is speller 154. Okay. Hi, I'm Dhruv and I'm in fifth grade. Speller 154, your word is in canoe. In canoe. Can I have all the information, please? You may. The word, uh, there are multiple pronunciations. There is in canoe, in canoe, in canoe, in canoe. Those are slightly different. And en canoe. Uh, it's a noun from French, meaning an unknown person or a stranger. The in canoe is extremely is an extremely secretive sect of vampires. In canoe. Does this come from the Greek root in meaning not? You're on the right track. In canoe. I N C O N N U. In canoe. That is correct. That's the end of round two. We have, um, let's see. We have 16 spellers remaining. Um, we'll go ahead and take a break. It's 13 right now. Um, let's try to come back by 18. So spellers, please uh, keep your videos on, but you can go ahead and leave the room and take a break. Or and judges too, you guys need a break, go for it. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, all right, cool. Let's we'll start round three with speller 12. I'm Advait and I'm in sixth grade. Just to clarify, we are using round three words. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, speller 12, your word is ademption. Ademption. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. Uh, this word has a couple alternate pronunciations. There is ademption, 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 ademption. It's a noun that comes from Latin. And in law, it is the revocation of a gift in a will inferred from the disposal as by sale of the property by the maker of the will before he or she dies. Nikki lost $2 million in an ademption issue as the property she inherited what, uh, from her grandfather is no longer existent at the time of his death. Can I please have all the information one more time? Yes. Ademption, 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 ademption. It's a noun from Latin, and in law, it is the revocation of a gift in a will inferred from the disposal as by sale of the property by the maker of the law before they die. Nikki lost $2 million in an ademption issue as the property she inherited from her grandfather is no longer existent at the time of his death. Can I please have all the pronunciations again? Yes. Ademption, 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 ademption. Ademption. A, D, E, M, P, T, I, O, N, ademption.
Okay, that is correct. Next speller is speller 25. Hi, my name is Teresa and I'm in eighth grade. Speller number 25, your word is, sorry, bacteria phrenic. Can you repeat the word, please? Bacteria phrenic. Can I have the language of origin? Yes. Bacteria phrenic is from a new Latin part plus a Latin part plus an English part. Bacteria phrenic. Am I saying it correctly? Not quite. Bacteria phrenic. Bacteria phrenic. It sounds more like it. Okay, can I have the definition? Bacteria phrenic means checking the development of a member of large, a large group of unicellular microorganisms. Bacteria phrenic. B A C T E R I A P H R E N I C. Bacteria phrenic. Sorry, it's incorrect. The correct spelling is B-A-C-T-E-R-I-O-F-R-E-N-I-C. Great job. Next speller is speller 28. Hello. Speller 28, your word is cadaster. Cadaster. Uh, can you repeat the word again, please? Cadaster. Cadaster. Um, may I have the definition, please? Uh, yes. A cadaster is a public register showing the details of ownership and value of land for the purpose of apportioning taxes. Cadaster. Um, may I have the language of origin, please? Uh, cadaster comes from French, which took it from Italian. Cadaster. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that's the only one. Cadaster. May I have the part of speech, please? Uh, cadaster is a noun. Okay, cadaster. Um, may I have the definition again, please? Uh, yes. A cadaster is a public register showing the details of ownership and value of land for the purpose of apportioning taxes. Cadaster? Uh, I believe so. Cadaster. Cadaster. Okay, cadaster. C A D A S T O R, cadaster. Sorry, it's incorrect. Correct spelling is C A D A S T R E. Great job. Thank you. Next speller is speller 42. Hi. <laughs> speller 42, your word is cupellation. Can I have the definition? Cupellation is the process of recovering precious metals such as gold or silver from lead by melting the alloy in a shallow porous container and oxidizing the lead by means of an air blast. Cupellation. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, there's one. Cupellation, also cupellation. Um, uh... Can I have the word in a sentence? You may. The assayer adjusted the temperature of the cupellation to calculate the gold content by separating other elements in the alloy. Can you repeat the pronunciations again? Yes, we have cupellation and cupellation. Can I have all the information? Yes. Cupellation, also cupellation, is a noun that comes from a French part and a Middle English part, meaning the process of recovering precious metals such as gold or silver from lead by melting the alloy in a shallow porous container and oxidizing the lead by means of an air blast. The assayer adjusted the temperature of the cupellation to calculate the gold content by separating other elements in the alloy. Can you repeat the word again? Cupellation, cupellation. Cupellation, C-U-P-E-L, 
L A T I O N. Cupellation. That is correct. The next speller is speller 48. Speller 48, your word is gunite. Can you repeat the word, please? Yes, the word is gunite. Can I ask the definition, please? Gunite, I, it's used in civil engineering. It is a mixture of cement, sand, and water applied through a pressure hose producing a dense hard layer of concrete that is used in building for lining tunnels and structural repairs. Gunite, am I pronouncing the word correctly? Gunite. Gunite. Can I have the language of origin, please? It's of unknown origin. Gunite. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one. Gunite. Gunite. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? Yes. The swimming pool contractor rolled out a long list of goods, including rebar and gunite, to build a backyard pool in Robert's house. Gunite. Can you repeat the definition, please? Uh, gunite is a mixture of cement, sand, and water applied through a pressure hose, producing a dense hard layer of concrete that is used in building for lining tunnels and structural repairs, especially, especially used in civil engineering. Gunite. Can you repeat the word, please? Yes. Gunite. Gunite. Can you give me all the information, please? Yes. Uh, the word is gunite, no alternate pronunciations. It is a noun of unknown origin, meaning a mixture of cement, sand, and water applied through a pressure hose, producing a dense hard layer of concrete that is used in building for lining tunnels and structural repairs. And the swimming pool contractor rolled out a long list of goods, including rebar and gunite, to build a backyard pool in Robert's house. Gunite. Gunite. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Gunite? I believe so. Could you say that once more? Gunite? Gunite. 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 Can you repeat the definition, please? Yes. Gunite is a mixture of cement, sand, and water applied through a pressure hose, producing a dense hard layer of concrete that is used in building for aligning tunnels and structural repair. Gunite. Gunite, can you repeat the sentence, please? Uh, yes. The swing, swimming pool contractor rolled out a long list of goods, including rebar and gunite, to build a backyard pool in Robert's house. Gunite. G U N I T E. Gunite. That is correct. Next speller is speller 53. Sorry, speller 53. Uh, your word is jam rosade. Jam rosade. Can I have the language of origin? Yes. Jam rosade comes from a Hindi part plus a Middle English part and another Middle English part. Can I have all the information? Yes. Jam rosade, that's the only pronunciation, is a noun. It comes from a Hindi part, a Middle English part, and another, another Middle English part. It is the fruit of the rose apple. Kelly liked the fermented jam rosade juice that was served at her friend's birthday party. Um, can you repeat the word? Jam rosade. Jam rosade, am I pronouncing it correctly? I believe so. Okay, and can I, can I have the language of origin again? Uh, yes. Uh, it comes from three parts. 
first one is Hindi, the next is Middle English, and the last is also Middle English. Um, can you have the definition again? Jerem Roseade is the fruit of the rose apple. Can you hear people language or words? I'm sorry. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, Jam Rosade comes from a Hindi part, a Middle English part, and a Middle English part. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one. Jam Rosade. J-A-M-R-O-S-A-D-E, Jamrose. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 55. Speller 55, your word is Marchese. Can I have the definition, please? Yes. Marchese means... Italian nobleman ranking above a count and below a prince. Can I have the language of origin? Uh, this word comes from Italian. Can I have the part of speech? It is a plural noun. Can I have all the information? Marchese, it's the only pronunciation. Uh, Marchese is a plural noun from Italian. Uh, Marchese are Italian noblemen ranking above a count and below a prince. A large canvas of the Marchese family by Van Dyke was sold for $50,000 at the annual auction. Can you repeat the part of speech, please? It is a plural noun. Marchese? I believe so. Marchese. Marchese, M-A-R-C-H-E-S-I, Marchese. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 73. Hello. Uh, speller 73, your word is plateresque. Uh, can you repeat the word? Plateresque. Plateresque. Okay, can I have so. all you... Uh, can I have all the information, please? Yes. Plateresque, this is the only pronunciation, is an adjective coming from Spanish. It means relating to a 16th style, sorry, 16th century Spanish architecture style, characterized by rich, rich ornamentation in the style of a silversmith. The facade of City Hall in Seville, a city in southwestern Spain, has a gorgeous plateresque design. Okay. Plateresque. Uh, can you repeat the language of origin? Uh, yes, uh, it comes from Spanish. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that is the only one. Plateresque. Can you repeat all the information, please? Plateresque, that's the only pronunciation, is an adjective coming from Spanish. It means relating to a style of 16th century Spanish architecture characterized by rich ornamentation in the style of a silversmith. The facade of City Hall in Seville, a city in southwestern Spain, has gorgeous plateresque design. Okay, is it plateresque or platter plateresque? Plateresque. Plateresque. Okay. Uh, can you repeat all the information one more time? Sorry. Yes. Plateresque, an adjective from Spanish, relating to a style of 16th century architecture uh, in Spain, characterized by rich ornamentation in the style of a silversmith. The facade of City Hall in Seville, a city in southwestern Spain, has gorgeous plateresque design. Okay, 
Plateresque. Uh, can you repeat the word one more time? Plateresque. Plateresque. And you said it was from Spanish? It is from Spanish. Okay. Plateresque. P L A T E R E S Q U E Plateresque. That's correct. Okay, thank Next you. Speller is Speller seventy six. Hi. Speller seventy six. Your word is Rochelle. Rochelle, can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, Rochelle comes from a French name. Rochelle, can I have the definition, please? Uh, Rochelle is a tannish face powder with pink undertones. Rochelle. Rochelle. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one given. Rochelle, can I have it in a sentence, please? Uh, yes. Sarah received a Rochelle face powder box as a birthday gift from her mother. Rochelle. Can I have the word one more time, please? Rochelle. Rochelle. Can I have the sorry. definition? Yes. Rochelle. Yes. Sorry. I've been correctly. Rochelle. Can I have the definition one more time? Rochelle is a tannish face powder with pink undertones. Rochelle. Rochelle. R A S C H E L. Rochelle. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling is R A C H E L. Thank you. Next speller, speller 82. Hello. Uh, speller 82, your word is steradian. Can you repeat the word, please? Steradian. Can I have the definition? Uh, steradian is the SI unit of solid angle equal to the angle at the center of a sphere subtended by a part of the surface equal to the area to the square of the radius? Uh, can, you, can I have the part of speech? Uh, steradian is a noun. Can you can I have the language of origin? Uh, yes, this comes from a new Latin part plus a Latin part plus an English part. Can you repeat the definition? Steradian is the SI unit of solid angle equal to the angle at the center of a sphere subtended by a part of the surface equal in area to the square of the radius. Can I have the part of speech again? Uh, yes, steradian is a noun. Steradian, S-T-I-R-A-D-I-A-N, Steradian. Sorry, it's incorrect. Correct spelling is S-T-E-R-A-D-I-A-N. Great job. Thank you. Next speller is speller 92. Hello. Hi, uh, speller 92. Your word is achalasia. Can you repeat the word? Achalasia. Achalasia? No. Achalasia. Achalasia? Achalasia. Achalasia? I believe so. Okay, um, can I have the definition? Achalasia is the failure of muscle of the failure of a ring of muscle fibers, such as a sphincter of the esophagus, to relax. Okay, can I have the language of origin? Achalasia comes from New Latin. Can you repeat the word? Achalasia. 
Achalesia. No, Achalesia. Achalesia. No, listen to me. Achalesia. Achalesia. That sounds more right. Okay, Achalesia. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is one. Achalesia and Achalesia. Okay, Achalesia. Achalasia, A C O L A S I A, Achalasia. Sorry, that's incorrect. Correct spelling is A C H A L A S I A. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Next speller is speller 103. Hi. Uh, speller 103, your word is. Aranarius. Aranarius. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. Aranarius is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective from late Latin, meaning containing sand or sandy particles, especially of soil. The east side of the mountain is surrounded by both calcareous and aranarius rocks. Aranarius. Can you please repeat the definition? Uh, Arenarius means containing sand or sandy particles. It's especially used of soil. Arenarius, can you please repeat the origin? Uh, it comes from late Latin. Arenarius. A R A N. E R I U S, Aranarius. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A R E N A R I O U S. Great job. The next speller is speller 117. Speller, <laughs> speller 117, your word is blastophthory. Blastophthory. Not quite. Blastophthory. Blastophthory. Can you please repeat the word? Blastophthory. Blastophthory. Can I please have the definition? Uh, yes. Blastophthory means degeneration of germ cells believed to be due to chronic poisoning as by alcohol or to disease. Last off three. Can I please have the language of origin? Uh, yes. Uh, blast off three is from New Latin. Last off three. Can I please have the part of speech? Yes. Last off three is a noun. Last off three. Can I please have the definition again? Uh, yes. Blastophthory is gener degeneration of the germ cells believed to be due to chronic poisoning as by alcohol or to disease. Blastophthory. Can you please repeat the word one more time? Blastophthory. 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 Can you please repeat the word? Blastophthory. Blastophthory. B L A S T O P H T H O R why? Last off three. That's correct. Next speller, speller 128. Thanks. Hi. Hi, speller uh, 128. Your word is damasay. 
Damasse can have the definition. Uh, Damasse is a rich, heavy linen fabric with a pattern woven into it, used for table linen and upholstery. Uh, Damasse can have the language of origin. Uh, Damasse is from French. Uh, Damasse can have all the information. Yes. Damasse, that's the only pronunciation. It's a noun coming from French. Damasse is a rich, heavy linen fabric with a pattern woven into it, used for table linen and upholstery. The dinner table at the party was set with a lavish display of candles and a shimmering Damasse. Damasse. Uh, can, can you I say that again? Damasse. Okay. Uh, can I have the part of speech? Damasse is a noun. Uh, can you repeat all the information? Yes. Damasse is the only pronunciation. It's a noun coming from French. Uh, Damasse is a rich, heavy linen fabric with a pattern woven into it, especially used for table linen and upholstery. The dinner table at the party was set with a lavish display of candles and shimmering damasse. 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 Uh, can you repeat the definition again? Yes. Damasse is a rich, heavy linen fabric with a pattern woven into it, used for table linen and upholstery. Damasse. D A M A S S E. Damasse. That is correct. Next speller is speller 134. I am Chaitra and Dan in sixth grade. Uh, speller 34, your word is Foshar. Foshar, may I have all of the information? Uh, yes, would you mind raising your hands a little bit? Okay. Foshar. Yes, uh, Foshar, that's the only pronunciation. It is a noun from French, meaning a long handled medieval weapon with a long convex edge. The Foshar weapon. Sorry. No. Go ahead. Foshar? Are, may I have uh, the language of origin again, please? Yes. Foshar comes from French. Foshar? Am I pronouncing it correctly? I believe so. Foshar. Foshar. F A U C H A R D. Foshar. That is correct. Next speller is speller 154. Okay. Speller 154, your word is lacrimiform. Lacrimiform. Does this come from the root lacrimus from Greek meaning teardrop? Yes, it does. Lacrimiform. Can I have all the information, please? Uh, yes. Lacrimiform is an adjective. It comes from a Latin part and an English part. Uh, it means having the shape of a teardrop, as in botany. The teardrop peperomia is a plant known for its shiny, dark green lacrimiform leaves. It is suitable for terrariums. Lacrimiform. L. A C R I M I F O R M lacrimiform. That is correct. That is the end of this round then. Um, we have let's see, we have 10 spellers remaining. Okay. Um, let's Take a short break, it's 50, so let's come back at 55, and then we'll start round four. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. Um,
first speller of this round, speller 12. Hello. Hello. Uh, speller 12, your word is Cousinet. Cousinet. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. The word is Cousinet, also Cousinet. It's a noun from French, meaning a stone placed on the impost of a pier for receiving the first stone of an arch. The architect student, architecture students learn different parts of an arch, including coussinet, springer, voussoir, keystone, extra dose, and intradose in the class. Intradose. Coussinet, can I have all the information one more time? Uh, yes. The word is coussinet, an alternate pronunciation of coussinet. It is a noun coming from French, meaning the, a stone placed on the impost of a pier for receiving the first stone of, the, of an arch. Um, the architecture students learned different parts of an arch, including coussinet, springer, voussoir, keystone, extradas, and ex intradas in the class. Coussinet. C O U S S O N N E T Kusane. Sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C O U S S I N E T. Great job. Thank you. Next speller is speller forty two. Hi. Spell oh, hi. Uh <laughs> Speller 42, uh, your word is kickamon. Can I have the definition? Yes, kickamon is a chrysanthemum flower in a conventionalized form with 16 petals used as the chief badge of the Japanese imperial family. Can I have the language of origin? This word comes from Japanese. Can I um, just have all the information? You may. Uh, the word is kikamon, also kikamon. It is a noun from Japanese. It is a chrysanthemum flower in a conventionalized form with 16 petals used as the chief badge of the Japanese imperial family. Derek noticed the kikamon seal on the front cover of his Japanese passport. Uh, can you repeat the definition again? Yes, kikamon is a chrysanthemum flower in a conventionalized form with 16 petals used as the chief badge of the Japanese imperial family. Kikamon. Can you repeat it again? Kikamon, or also kikamon. Kikamon. K I K U. M O N, kick them on. That's correct. Next speller is speller 48. Um, just very quickly, um, if you do misspell, uh, if you could stay in the Zoom call, that would be great, just in case we need to do a tiebreaker. Um, but yeah, okay, speller 48. Hi. Hi, uh, speller 48, your word is Inca block. Inca block, can I ask the definition, please? Inca block is a brand of chalk resistant balance jewel mounting and balance staff design in watches. Inca block, can I ask the language of origin, please? Uh, Inca block is from a trademark. Inca block, are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one I have. Inca block. In <clears throat> Inca block, can you use the word in a sentence, please? Uh, yes. Inca block is one of the most popular shock protection systems fitted to best quality Swiss mechanical watches. Inca block. Inca block. Am I pronouncing the word correctly? Inca block? As far as I can tell, yes. Inca block. Can you can give you me all the. Could you just say that one more time? Inca block? I believe so. Inca block. Inca block. Can you give me all the information, please? Yes. Uh, the word is Inca block. No alternate pronunciations. 
It is a noun which uh, is originates from a trademark. Uh, Inca Block is a brand of shock resistant balance jewel mounting and balance staff design in watches. Inca Block is one of the most popular shock protection systems fitted to best quality Swiss mechanical watches. Inca Block. Can you repeat the language of origin, please? Ah, uh, yes, it is a trademark. Inca Block. Can you repeat the definition, please? Ah, uh, yes. Inca Block is a brand of shock resistant, balanced jewel mounting, and balanced staff design in watches. Inca Block. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? I can. Inca Block is one of the most popular shock protection systems fitted to best quality Swiss mechanical watches. Inca Block. Can you repeat the definition one more time, please? Inca block is a brand of shock resistant balanced jewel mounting and balanced staff design in watches. Inca block. I N C A B L O C Inca block. That's correct. Uh, next speller is speller 53. Speller 53, your word is Halsist. Can you repeat that? Halsist. Halsist, can I have um, all of the information? Yes, the word is Halsist. That's the only pronunciation. It is a noun. It comes from a Middle English part and a Welsh part. Uh, a hall cyst is a large rectangular earth covered corridor made of rock slabs and used in ancient times as a tomb. There is a replica of a hall cyst on display at the National Museum last spring. Can you repeat the word? Hall cyst. Hall cyst, am I pronouncing it correctly? Could you say that again? Hall cyst. Uh, I believe so. I'm just going to pronounce it one more time for you. Halsist. Halsist or halsist? Halsist. Can you say it one more time? Halsist. Halsist. Halsist? I believe so. Can I have the definition again? Hall cyst is a large rectangular earth covered corridor made of rock slabs and used in ancient times as a tomb. Can you repeat the word? Hall cyst. Hall cyst. Your audio is a little strange, so I, yeah, could you just say it one more time? Hall cyst. I believe so. Hall cyst. Okay. And can I have a language of origin again? Uh, it comes from a Middle English part plus a Welsh part. Did you repeat all of the information? Yes, the word is Halsist. That's the only pronunciation. It is a noun from Middle English plus Welsh. A Halsist is a large rectangular earth covered corridor made of rock slabs and used in ancient times as a tomb. There is a replica of a Halsist on display at the National Museum last spring. Could I have you pronounce it one more time? Halsist. Actually, could you listen to me again? Halsist. 
Halsted. 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 Ah, uh, that's the only one. Hall cyst. Hall cyst. I believe so. Okay. And can you repeat the language of origin? It comes from a Middle English part and a Welsh part. Hall cyst. Hall cyst. Uh, okay, so you can't ask for any further information, so go ahead and spell the word. Yeah. Falsus. H. O. L. C. I. S. T. Falsus. Sorry, it's incorrect. Correct spelling is H. A. L. L. C. I. S. T. Great job. All right, next speller is speller 55. All right, speller 55, your word is esparse. Can I have the definition, please? Esparse is a Eurasian perennial herb having pink flowers and curved pods. Can I have the language of fortune? Uh, the language of origin is French. S par se. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, no, that's the only one. Can S I par se. Can I borrow the information, please? Of course. S par se, that's the only pronunciation. It's a noun from French. It means a Eurasian perennial herb having pink flowers and curved pods. The esparse is often grown as a forage crop. Esparse. Does this have the French diminutive et or a? Wait one moment. You're on the right track. Can you repeat the word? S par se. S par se. E S P A R C E T. S par se. That is correct. Thank you. Next speller is speller 73. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for asking. <laughs> I, uh, Speller 73, your word is domne. Domne. Uh, okay. Is this Portuguese? Uh, no, it is from oh. Old Provençal from Latin. Okay. Can I have the definition? Uh, yes. Domne is the Provençal ideal or cult of courtly love prevalent among the troubadours. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? I. Uh, that is the only one. Domne. Okay. Uh, can you repeat all the information, please? Uh, yes. The word is domne. I might have been pronouncing it slightly incorrectly before. The word is domne. It is a noun. It comes from Old Provençal from Latin. And it is the Provençal ideal of, or cult of courtly love prevalent among the troubadours. Claire played the role of a domne in the musical drama. Okay, domne. D O M N E I, domne. 
That's correct. Next speller is speller 117. Spell, uh, speller 117, your word is clissus. Clissus. Can you please repeat the word? Uh, yes. Clissus. Clissus. <clears throat> can, can you please have the alternate pronunciations? Uh, that is the only one. Clissus. Clissus. Can I please have the part of speech? It is a noun. Clusis, can I please have the language of origin? It is from New Latin. Clusis, can I please have the definition? Uh, Clusis is a quintessence or efficacious principle. Clusis, can you please repeat the word one more time? Yes, the word is clusis. Clusis. Clusis, can you please... Can you please repeat the word? Clissus. Clissus. Am I pronouncing this correctly? I believe so. Clissus. Can I please have the definition again? Uh, Clissus is a quintessence or efficacious principle. Clissus. Uh, I, I want to pronounce the word again for you. The word is Clissus. 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 Um, not quite. The word, the word clissus. 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 Uh, yeah, that sounds more like it. Clissus. Clissus. Can you repeat the word one more time? Clissus. Clissus. Can I please have all the information? Uh, yes. The word is clissus. Clissus. It's a noun from New Latin, a quintessence or efficacious principle. The clissus consists. The clissus constitutes of any substance that is extracted, purified, and then remixed. Clissus. Clissus. <clears throat> Clissus. Repeat the word one more time. Clissus. 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 C L Repeat the word again. Clissus. Definition. Uh Clissus is a quintessence or efficacious principle. Clissus. Can I start over? You may. Clissus. C L Y S I S. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. The correct spelling is C-L-Y-S-S-U-S. -S -S. Really great job, though. Thank you. Next speller is speller 128. Hi. Hi. Uh, speller 128, your word is bimolar. Uh, can you repeat the word again? Bimolar. Bimolar can have the definition. Yes. Uh, a bimolar is a member of a 19th century communal sect of German Protestant separatists and founders of the Zohar community at Zohar, Ohio, in 1817. They're also known as Zoharites, uh, but the word is bimolar. Bimolar. Can I have the part of speech? It is a noun. Can I have all the information? Uh, yes. The word is... Bimler, also Bimler, it's a noun. Uh, it comes from a German-American name. A Bimler is a member of a 19th century communal sect of German Protestant separatists and founders of the Zohar movement at Zohar, Ohio in 1817. 
the Bimmler emigrated from the Kingdom of Württemberg in southern Germany due to religious oppression from the Lutheran Church. Bimmler, um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, Bimmler, Bimmler. Those are the two I have. Bimmler. B I M M E L E R Bimler. That's correct. All right. Uh, next speller is speller one thirty four. All right, speller one thirty four. Your word is uh, one second. Chaitra, okay. your secondary video is up. You okay, need to switch it down. Um, my battery is slow, so I'm going to get my charger quickly. Um, okay, just for sake of time, let's go to Speller 154 and we'll come back to 134. Uh, Cooper, if you could just go in the order and stay with the same word that he would have okay. gotten. Uh, so Does that it work you... now? Yeah, okay. Oh, I can see. Okay, never mind. Let's go with 134 then. Yeah. So I'll you. give. Word nine to Speller 134. Yes. Okay. Speller 134, your word is acroides. Acroides, may I have all of the information, please? Yes. Uh, the word is acroides, also acroides. It's a noun which comes from New Latin. Is a red or yellow resin obtained from the trunks of several Australian grass trees. The acroides is used chiefly in varnishes, lacquers, and paper manufacturing. Acroides. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, I believe so. That is one of the pronunciations. Acroides. A C C R O I D E S. Acroides. That's correct. Thank Next you. Next speller is 154. Okay. Speller 154, your word is mesimnion. Mesimnion? Mesimnion. Mesimnion. Is that so. correct? Yes. Mesimnion. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. The word is mesimnion, also mesimnion. It is a noun which comes from Greek. Uh, it is a short colon or rhythmic series interpolated in a stanza, especially in classical prosody. The invocations that form the mesimnion const constitute three ionics more, it, three ionics in minore. Sorry. Mesimnion. Mesimnion, right? Oh, Drew, sorry. My, can, can you please see your friend, please? Mesimnion, right? Mesimnion. Mesimnion. Can, does this come from the Greek root mesos, meaning middle? Yes. Mesimnion. M E S I M N I O N. Mesimnion. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M-E-S-Y-M-N-I-O-N. -S Great job, though. All right, that's the end of this round. So we have six spellers remaining. Um, and so we are going to take a break for about five minutes. It's 20, so let's go until 25. And um, yeah, so spellers, if you can return at 25. Uh, awesome, it looks like all of our spellers are back. Thank you guys. Um, cool, we are going to go ahead and get it started with the next round with six spellers. Uh, just for transparency, we did have an appeal um, and the judges reviewed the tape and decided to deny the appeal. So we will just continue with the six spellers who spelled correctly in the previous round. Um, okay, so we'll start round five now with speller 42. All right, speller 42, your word is 
desiatine. Can I have the definition? Yes. Uh, a desiatine is a Russian unit of land area equal to 2.7 acres. Um, can I have the language of origin? Desiatine comes from Russian. Can I have the word in a sentence? Uh, Adrian owns one desiatine of farmland in Russia. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is one. There's desiatine, also desiatine. Can you repeat all the information? Yes. Uh, the word is desiatine, also desiatine. It's a noun which comes from Russian. Uh, and it is a Russian unit of land area equal to 2.7 acres. In the sentence, Adrian owns one desiatine of farmland in Russia. Desiatine. Can you repeat the definition? Desiatine is a Russian unit of land area equal to 2.7 acres. Desiatine. D E S S I A T I N E. Desiatine? That is correct. Um, just for the record, if spellers do misspell this round, just stay on the Zoom call, um, just in case we need to do a tiebreaker. Um, okay, next speller is speller 48. Hi. Hi. Uh, speller 48, your word is Malette. Can you repeat the word, please? Malette. Are there any alternate pronunciations? That's the only one. Mollet. Mollet? Mollet. Can I have the definition, please? Mollet is a non-Muslim group or community in the Ottoman Empire. Mollet? Am I pronouncing it correctly? I believe so. Mollet. Can you say the word again, please? Mollet. Is it is it mullet or molet? Could you ex expand upon what you just said? Is it mullet or like molet? Mullet. Okay, can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, mullet is from Turkish from Arabic. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? Uh, yes, I can. Mallet. Okay. The mallet is defined in terms of re religious affiliation with a degree of legal autonomy. Mallet. 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 Can you give me all the information, please? Yes. The word is malet. That's the only pronunciation. It's a noun, which comes from Turkish from Arabic. It is a non-Muslim group or community in the Ottoman Empire. The malet is defined in terms of religious affiliation with a degree of legal autonomy. Can you repeat the word, please? Yes. Malet. Mallet? Mallet. Can you pronounce the word again, please? Yes. Mallet. Mallet. Can you give me all the information again, please? Yes. The word is mallet. It's a noun, which comes from Turkish, from Arabic. It is a non-Muslim group or community in the Ottoman Empire. The mallet is, de is defined in terms of religious affiliation and has a degree of legal autonomy. Mallet? 
Moet. You have 30 seconds left. Moet. Moet. M. A L E T Moet. Sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M I L L E T. Great job, though. Um, next speller is speller 55. Speller 55, your word is my robolin. Can I have the definition, please? My robolin uh, means the dried astringent fruit of a tropical tree used chiefly in tanning and in ink. My robolin? My robolin. My robolin? That sounds about right. Can I have the language of fortune, please? My robolin comes from Middle French. My robolin? Can I have all the information? Yes. The word is my robolin, also mirabolin. It is a noun which comes from Middle French. It is the dried astringent fruit of a tropical tree used chiefly in tanning and in ink. The dried fruit of the myrobolin is a traditional medicine. Can you repeat the pronunciations, please? Uh, yes, there is myrobolin, also myrobolin. Could you repeat the pronunciations again? Myrobolin, myrobolin. My Robolan or Mirabolan? That sounds about right. Can I have all the information again? Uh, the word is My Robolan, also Mirabolan. It is a noun which comes from Middle French. It is the dried astringent fruit of a tropical tree used chiefly in tanning and ink. The dried fruit of My Robolan is used in traditional medicine. My Robolan. M Y R O B A L A N, My Robolan. That is correct. The next speller is speller 73. Speller 73, your word is Rasaldar. Um, can you repeat the word, please? Rasaldar. Can I have all the information, please? Yes, the word is Rasaldar, also Rissaldar. It is a noun which comes from Hindi. Uh, a Rasaldar is a native commander in charge of Indian cavalry in the Anglo-Indian army. Raj's grandfather was a Rasaldar in the regiment of the British Indian Army. Rasaldar, um, are there any, uh, can you repeat the alternate pronunciations? Yes, there is Rasaldar, also Rasaldar. Uh, can you repeat all the information, please? Uh, yes, the word is Rasaldar, also Rissaldar. It is a noun, it comes from Hindi. It is a native commander in charge of Indian cavalry in the Anglo-Indian army. Raj's grandfather was a Rissaldar in the regiment of the British Indian army. Rissaldar. Um, can you repeat the language of origin? Uh, it comes from Hindi. Rissaldar, R-I-S-S-A-L-D-A-R, Rissaldar. That is correct. Next speller is speller 128. Hi. Hi. Uh, speller 128, your word has a homophone. The word is cockle. Uh, it is a noun meaning a game played with knuckle bones of sheep instead of dice. 
Uh, cockle can have the origin. It's of unknown origin. Cockle can have all the information. Yes, the word is cockle. That is the only pronunciation. It is a noun of unknown origin. It is a game played with knuckle bones of sheep instead of dice. The children are playing the game of cockle on the doorsteps of a house. Uh, cockle. Uh, can you repeat the definition? Yes. Cockle is a game played with knuckle bones of sheep instead of dice. Cockle, um, can I have the part of speech? Cockle is a noun. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? Uh, yes. The children are playing the game of cockle on the doorsteps of a house. Cockle. C A W K L E cockle. Sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C O C K A L. Next speller is speller 134. Speller 134, your word is cornemuse. Cornemuse definition. Uh, cornemuse is a French bagpipe. Cornemuse, they have all of the information. Yes, the word is cornemuse. That's the only pronunciation. It's a noun. Uh, it comes from Middle English, from Middle French. Uh, Cornemuse is a French bagpipe. Camilla plays traditional melodies on her cornemuse. Cornemuse. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Sounds about right. Cornemuse. Cornemuse. C O R N E M E U S E. Cornemuse. Sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C O R N E M U S E. Okay, um, so it's the end of round five. So we have two spellers who spelled correctly speller 55, Surya, and speller 73, Aiden. So um, this is what we're going to do. So both of you are going to be going to the finals. And so, um, oh, I'm sorry. And sorry. Speller 42, Emmanuel, you also spelled correctly. I'm sorry. Um, and so the three of you will be going to the finals. Then um, between the three spellers that misspelled in this round, Speller 48, Speller 128, and Speller 134, we are going to do a tiebreaker for that last one remaining slot for the finals. Um, so the spellers who spelled correctly, you guys can stay on the call if you want to, or you guys can... Uh, can leave and carry on with the rest of your day. Um, and we'll continue a tiebreaker with 48, 128, and 134. Okay, um, judges, does anyone want a break slash time to calibrate on things or are we good to go ahead with these three spellers? I'm good. Okay, um, yeah, let's go ahead then. Um, We'll use the tiebreaker list, um, starting with round one. And all right, we'll start word this one, round. Mean? Word one, yes, tiebreaker okay. list, word one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll start with Speller 48 then. Okay, Speller 48, your word has a homophone. The word is cask. Uh, this word comes from French, sorry, it is a noun and it is a piece of armor for the head, a helmet shaped hat or headdress. Can you repeat the word please? Cask. Cask. Can I have the uh, language of origin again? please? Cask is from French. Cask. Can you repeat the definition please? Cask is a piece of armor for the head, a helmet-shaped hat or headdress. Cask. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? 
The Natural History Museum acquired a 14th century cask for its ancient armor division. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is one. There's cask, but there's also cask. Cask. Can you repeat the language of origin, please? It is from French. Can you repeat the definition, please? Uh, a cask is a piece of armor for the head, a helmet-shaped hat or headdress. And this has a homonym, correct? Uh, yes. Cask. C-A-S-Q-U-E, cask. That is correct. Next speller is speller 128. Speller 128, your word is malaxage. Uh, can you repeat the word again? Malaxage. Malaxage can have the definition. Uh, malaxage is the process of making the clay soft by adding water and kneading. Uh, malaxage. Uh, can I have the language of origin? This word comes from French. Malaxage. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, there is one. Uh, there is malaxage, but there's also malaxage. Malaxage. Uh, can I have all the information again? Yes, the word is malaxage, also malaxage. It's a noun that comes from French. It means the process of making the clay soft by adding water and kneading. The malaxage is a key skill to be a good potter. Malaxage. M A L A X A G E. Malaxage. That is correct. Next speller is speller 134. Speller 134, your word is Boccaccio. Boccaccio, may I have all of the information? Uh, the word is Boccaccio, also Boccaccio. It's a noun, it comes from Italian. It is a large brown rockfish of California coastal waters. The Boccaccio is an important sport and commercial fish on much of the Eastern Pacific. Could you repeat the word? Uh, yes, the word is Boccaccio, also Boccaccio. Boccaccio, B-O-C-A-C-C-I-O, -C -C Boccaccio. That is correct. All right, um, so that's that first tiebreaker round. Just one second. Go ahead and begin with round seven. Speller 48. Okay. Uh, speller 48, your word is synapism. Synapism. Can I ask the definition, please? Uh, yes. Synapism is a plaster, uh, a Plaster containing powdered black mustard and a rubber solution on fabric that is applied to the skin as a counter irritant or rubefacient. Synapism. Can I have the language of origin, please? Synapism is from late Latin. Synapism. Could you pronounce it again for me? Synapism. That sounds about right. Does this come from the Greek sin meaning together? It does not. Okay, synapism. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, that is the only pronunciation here. Synapism. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? Uh, yes. Amanda applied a stimulating synapism for her sore muscles. Synapism. Can you uh, repeat the word, please? Synapism. Can you repeat the language of origin, please? It is from late Latin. Synapism. Can you repeat the definition, please? 
Cinepism is a plaster containing powdered black mustard and a rubber solution on fabric that is applied to the skin as a counter irritant or rubefacient. Cinepism. Can you pronounce the word again, please? Cinepism. 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 Am I pronouncing it correctly? I believe so. Cinepism. 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 Can you repeat the language of origin, please? Yes, this word comes from late Latin. Cinepism. Can you use the word in a sentence? Uh, yes. Amanda applied a stimulating cinepism for her sore muscles. Cinepism. Cinepism. Can you pronounce the word again, please? Yes. Cinepism. Okay, you can't ask for any further information. Go ahead and spell the word. Cinepism. S-I-N-O-P-I-S-M, cinepism. Sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is S-I-N-A-P-I-S-M. Thank you. Great job. Um, next speller is speller 128. Hi. Speller 128, your word is palenka. Can you repeat the word again? Palenka. Palenka? No. Palanka. Palanka? Not quite. Palanka. Uh, can you say the word again? Yes. Palanka. Palanka? No. Palanka. 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 Uh, can I have the definition? Yes. Palenka is from Turkey. Sorry, no. The definition, uh, it is a permanently entrenched camp attached to a Turkish frontier fortress. Palenka? Uh, no, not quite. Palenka. Palenka. Palenka? Still don't think I quite hear it right. Palenka. Palenka. Um, okay. I would focus on the first syllable uh, that Cooper is saying. Okay. Palenka. Palenka. Uh, can I have the origin? Uh, yes. This word is from Turkish. Palenka. Not, could you listen to me one more time? Palenka, Palenka. Palenka? Not quite. Palenka. Palenka? Palenka. Um, can I have all the information? Uh, yes. This word is, uh, Palenka is a permanently entrenched camp attached to Turkish frontier fortresses.
Uh, Palenka. Uh, Palenka. Palenka. Sounds close to right. Okay. Can I have the part of speech? Uh, it is a noun. Okay. P A L A N K A Palenka. Sorry, give us one sec. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Next speller is speller 134. Speller 134, your word is Sipolin. Sipolin, may I have all of the information? Yes, the word is Sipolin, also Sipolin. It is a noun from French and Italian. Sipolin uh, is a, an Italian marble with alternating white and green streaks. The stairway in Deborah's house is lined with Sipolin marble. Sipolin. May I have often, may I, could, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, just the two I gave earlier. Sipolin, Sipolin. Sipolin, Sipolin. Um, C I P O L L I N, Sipolin. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C I P O L I N. Okay, um, we do have an appeal from a speller, so the judges are going to go um, discuss that before we finalize. Um, so spellers, feel free to take a break for five minutes and we will, we'll come back. Spellers, I think are back. Okay. So, um, just, okay. So we had an appeal the previous round from a speller 48 for giving, um, incorrect or incomplete information. And so we are going to accept the appeal and give you a new word in place of the previous one. Um, so this would be just kind of scratching your word and replacing for round seven. Excuse me, I appealed two. Okay. Um, okay, let's let's go ahead and go forward with Speller 48, and then we'll return to Speller 134's appeal. Cooper, you're muted. <laughs> Darn, yes. Hi. Uh, Speller 48, your word is alabark. Alabark? Uh, can I ask the definition, please? Alabark is the chief magistrate of the Jews at Alexandria under the Ptolemies and the Roman Empire. Alabark, can I ask the language of origin, please? Alabark comes from Latin, from Greek. Alabark. Does this come from the Greek ark, meaning ruler? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, it does. Alabark. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, there is only one. Alabark. Alabark, can you use the word in a sentence, please? Uh, alabark, okay. An alabark was a Jewish official responsible for taxation. Alabark, can you repeat all the information, please? The word is alabark. It is a noun which comes from Latin from Greek is the chief magistrate of the Jews at Alexandria under the Ptolemies in the Roman Empire. An alabarch was a Jewish official responsible for taxation. Alabarch, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, yes, I believe so. Alabarch. Alabarch. Can you use the word in a sentence again, please? 
Ah, uh, yes. An alibarch was a Jewish official and responsible for taxation. Alibarch? Can you, <clears throat> can you pronounce the word again, please? Ah, uh, yes. Alibarch. Alibarch. Alibarch, can you repeat the definition, please? Ah, uh, yes. An alibarch is the chief magistrate of the Jews at Alexandria under the Ptolemies in the Roman Empire. Alibarch. 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 Can you repeat the <clears throat> language of origin, please? Ah, uh, yes, this word comes from Latin, from Greek. Alibarch, A-L-I-B-A-R-C-H, alibarch. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A-L-A-B-A-R-C-H. Thank you. Okay. Um, Judges, we're going to go to a breakout room for a few more minutes just to deliberate a few more things. And yes, we'll return in a few minutes. Okay, um, we are back and we've re reviewed the appeal. Um, we have decided that because what the speller said was not an act is not an actual word in the dictionary that um, there isn't any basis for that appeal. And so we will be denying that. Um, and then in that case, we are going to go ahead and finalize our top four for this group. So um, that would be Speller 42, Emmanuel, Goveus, Speller 55, Surya Kapu, Speller 73, Aidan Lewandowski, and then Speller 128, Shijay Shivakumar. Um, the four of you, I'm not sure all of you are still here, but the four of you will be going to the finals um, tomorrow after tomorrow evening, afternoon, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, so we will see you then. Um, and congratulations to all the spellers you spelled today. You guys did great. And thank you to the judges for being awesome as well.